Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. In this video, I want to talk in detail about the effects tab that's found in the edit panel of Lightroom CC. In a previous video, I did talk about one of the functions that is found inside of the effects tab. You may remember a couple videos ago, I talked about split toning. And if you look inside the effects tab, to the far right, you'll see this little square. And if you click on that, you'll open up the split toning tab. Now in that video, I went into detail about split toning, but I really didn't talk about any of these other sliders. Now I'd like to talk about those now. Now, the first two sliders, Clarity and Dehaze, in Lightroom Classic CC, are, these sliders are found up in the top basic panel. That's because there are a couple sliders that you're probably going to want to do earlier in your workflow. Whereas the other two sliders, Vignette and Grain, you'd probably want to do later in your workflow. So. I question why Adobe put these two sliders in the effects tab, which is kind of implying that you do these later. Really, I suggest you do clarity and or dehaze earlier in your workflow. You'll find out, you'll find that your post-processing will work out better that way. Now, one great thing about Lightroom CC, it has what Adobe calls tool tips. If you just hover over a name of any of the sliders, like I'll hover over Clarity, and you'll see this tooltip pops up, and it will tell you exactly what the slider does. It says, changes the contrast around the edges of objects in your photo, move left to soften portraits, move right to make landscapes more clear. And that's pretty much exactly how you'd like to use it. Usually in a portrait, you'd like to soften it a little bit, move this slider a little bit to the left. In a landscape, other types of images, maybe macros, you'd like to make it very crisp and clear. Move clarity to the right. Clarity is often called mid-tone contrast because it does exactly that. It adds, adds contrast predominantly in the mid-tones. Now, on this image, because it's more of a landscape image, I would most likely want to move it to the right. So as I move it to the right, you'll notice that it adds clarity to the image so moving it to the left on the other hand will soften the image and it will give the image more of an ethereal look so it depends really on what type of look you want but for this specific image i would prefer to add clarity by pushing it positive to the right now the dehaze slider below that works great on landscapes when you get a little you have a little haze in the atmosphere and it doesn't, it, it's kind of making the background of your landscape not look clear. If that is the case, you would take dehaze and move it to the right. And you can see how it's, it's really increasing the con overall contrast of the image. On the other hand, if you want to add a little bit of artificial haze to your image, you would take dehaze and move it to the left. Now, one thing you have to be aware of with dehaze, if you move it to the right and you move it too far, you'll start to clip some of the colors. Now, a handy thing about dehaze in Lightroom CC is you could see this by holding in your Alt or Option key while you adjust the dehaze slider. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, hold that in, then when you click on the dehaze slider, you'll see the screen turns white. Now, as I move it to the right, you're going to see some colors come through. You'll see I'll be clipping green, the green channel. I'm starting to clip some of the blue channel. Um, wherever it's black, I'm clipping all three channels. Where it's gray, I'm, picking, I'm clipping two of the three channels, the three channels being red, green, or blue. So typically, you might not want to clip your channels <laughs> too much. If you do, you'll lose any detail in those areas. Now on this specific image, you may notice that I have some black clipping up over in here. And you could see that it's probably, if I printed that, there's no detail at all there. It's going to come out totally black. 
So that helps you adjust the dehaze slider to make sure you're not clipping any of the color channels. So on this image, I think moving it to the right does a nice job. It enhanced the color and I don't mind. It tends to, it, when you, by the way, when you do move dehaze to the right, it will tend to clip the shadows. And I don't mind my uh, shadows in my landscape images being clipped just a little. In my opinion, at least for my work, I believe it adds some visual depth, tonal depth to the image. So I like that. So I won't, uh, that won't bother me none, <laughs> as they say. So I like that. Now the slider below that is vignette. Often we like to add a vignette to our image because it helps draw the viewer's attention more towards the middle of the image. With this vignette slider, if I move it to the right, I'll add a white vignette. If I move it to the left, I'll add a darker vignette or a black vignette. And you can see the further you move it, the darker it is. Now, one thing to be aware of with the vignette slider itself, there's more control available. If you look to the right, you'll notice there's a little triangle. That's called an expose triangle. Click on that and you'll notice that four more sliders appear. And these sliders help you um, shape the vignette uh, the way you want it for your specific image. Now for this image, I'd prefer a dark vignette. So I'd move it to the left and you can see I'm starting to vignette the corners. Now this, I'm going to leave it heavier than I probably normally would apply one because I want to demonstrate these other uh, sliders. Midpoint is where the midpoint of the vignette is. Now, one little handy tip I could give you, whenever you adjust the midpoint, midpoint, roundness, or feather sliders, hold in the Alter Option key when you do it. It's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac. When you do that, and as soon as you click on and start to move the slider, you'll maximize the color of the vignette temporarily so you could better see what you're doing with the slider you're moving. Now you can see the, the midpoint, when I move this, it's more or less encroaching more on the middle of the image when I move it to the left. And if I hold that alter option key and move it to the right, you can see it's pulling it away from the middle. So this helps you find the midpoint of where you want this to be. Now in this case, I'm gonna move it to the right a little bit because I don't want the vignette to uh, hit the boat down here. So I have it off the boat. And you can see how I did that by holding the Alter Option key in. It maximized the darkness of the vignette. And by the way, if I had a white vignette on here and I clicked on here, then it would maximize it in white, just so you understand. So we'll put that on a little heavy. And again, so I'm pulling it back so it's not on this boat at all. Now, roundness, similarly, I'll hold that Alter Option key in and click on it. And as soon as I start to move it, it maximizes the vignette. And you can see if I move it to the far right, I have more or less a perfect circle. And if I move it to the left, it's just really in the corners and it's more of a rectangle. Of course, if you're working with a square image, it would be a square. So I could, you know, I, I want my vignette to be rounded, more oval. I don't want it to be circular. So I, I think actually right in the middle is probably good. Now, if I want to reset this, I just need to click. I just hover over where it says roundness and click there and it will reset it. You also could just double click right on the slider itself and it will reset it. So I think roundness right in the middle is fine. Feathering, again, I'm going to, going to hold in the option key because I'm using a Mac. Of course, if, again, if you have a PC, it's the Alt key. I'll click on this and you can see it maximizes the darkness of the vignette so I could best feather it. Now, as I move it to the right, I want it more heavily feathered as opposed to this kind of abrupt vignette. You see all the way to the left gives you this non-feathered vignette, so it's very abrupt. As I move it to the right, it will increase the feathering and make it softer on the edge. So I want it relatively soft, but again, I don't want it to affect that boat. As I soften it, it's starting to encroach upon the back or the stern of the boat. So I will go back up to midpoint and I would uh, readjust midpoint to pull that away a little more. So that's how you adjust those. Now, as far as highlights is 
concerned. Often if you're adding a vignette and you have something very light in the corners, it won't look right that let's say you have this expansive um, group of clouds and all of a sudden the clouds are dark in the corner. Well, you could bring out those highlights by moving the highlight slider to the right. I found with um, Lightroom CC that highlights doesn't seem to affect the image quite as much as it does in Lightroom Classic CC. I am under the impression that it uses the same process engine, but I don't know if this highlight slider is working quite as well. So if you add your added or you applied a vignette to your image and you're not happy with the way it looks in the corners because it looks like it's making the bright parts look a little too dark, take that highlight slider and move it to the right. And once you adjust them, if you want to save space, you could close the expose triangle just to close it down. Those adjustments will stay. They will not go away. Now, below that, we have grain. Many times, we like to give our image a grainy look to make it look like it's film. And if that's the case, just take this grain slider and move it to the right. And the more you move it to the right, the more grain you're going to add. Now, again, there's a little expose triangle. And if you click on that, you'll notice there's two more sliders. We could affect two more properties of the grain. The actual size of the actual grain, if I move it to the right, you're going to make those granules larger. If you move it to the left, you'll make them smaller. And the roughness of the grain, if, it's, um, if you want it very kind of uniform, like a, a, just kind of a piece of like soft sandpaper, you would move it to the left. If you want them, though, to be more irregular and more, you know, sandpapery, move it to the right. That was a horrible analogy, and I apologize for it. But that's the way you would affect grain. So you could just come in and move this, these three sliders until you are satisfied that you've applied the grain the way you'd like it. Now, in this image, and in most of my images, I don't like to apply any artificial grain. So in this case, I'm going to keep this off. And that's really everything you need to know about the effects panel that's found in Lightroom CC. Thank you, everyone, for watching my video series, Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There, you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.